Do you ever love somebody so much that that it hurts? Like you you have like pain, a painful feeling. <clears throat> well, that's how I feel about my son, Christian. He's almost 17. He's got himself in a little bit of trouble. You know, I've, I've, got myself into worse trouble than, than he is, but kids struggle because, uh, well, I wasn't there for, um, I wasn't there for a year and a half when he was two and a half to four. I wasn't there for him. And, uh, but that was my, it was necessary. It was, it was so necessary. And I understand that Kids struggle with demons and they don't really know it or understand it. You try to talk to them about it. It's certain times you can and you can't. But, um, you know, my son is the reason why I turned to God. My son is the pain that I felt in my heart when I was in jail knowing that I left him. Talking to a two and a half year old's voice on the phone when you're in there for three days. No, and I'm not. No, I'm. I was literally in there for three days when I freaking woke up from a coma from from taking like five Xanax every day and going out stealing. And once you come off Xanax like that, you sleep. So I'm not saying three days just because, uh, you know, like Jesus over there died for three hours. Yeah, well, you know, after three or four minutes... You lose, you take, lose oxygen to the brain. You, you start to become brain dead. After 20 minutes of no oxygen, you're basically dead. Your organs start failing, kidneys and everything. So, I say because from my memory, that's when that's what I remember. October 28, 2014. You can look it up, Steve. That's when I got locked up. You can't... You can't know when I turned to God. Only I can tell you that. And it was three days later on Halloween, after I talked to my son on the phone, and he had his, he was baking his cookies, and he wanted to know when I was coming home, and I had no clue, because I'm looking at five to ten years with the amount of charges that they were accusing me of, man. So yeah, that was me turning to God, as I said many times before, literally talking to God, okay. Down on my knees in my 8x8 jail cell. Asking him to take over my life. Because I am a fucking piece of shit. You think God turned away from me because I cursed? I don't think so. Obviously, for me, not at all. But when your kid struggles through things. I, it, just, I, it hurts deep. More than anything in the world. It just hurts deep. And uh, for the people that can't feel love. You don't want to feel it. You're too prideful. To let your wall down. And believe me. Your walls are going to be coming down soon. It ain't about building the freaking wall that Trump talks about. That you look at the Bible. Oh, he's building the wall. It's... He's literally building the wall, and there's going to be a third temple being built, and we're going to have to wait until the third temple is built. As soon as he signed a peace treaty, well, then we have exactly seven years to go to the date, and then we'll all know when Christ is returning. But in the meantime, Robin, I'm going to beat you over the head with the burrito you keep buying every day at Wawa, uh, Wawa and uh, tell you that you don't freaking know the day or the hour whatsoever, ever. You can't even possibly know. Well, yeah, you can't really know for sure because we're not God, but you can kind of get the idea. So, when when people struggle and you know what's tormenting them, because demons are everywhere. They're, I expect them to come out today. You know what I mean? Like, today's Sunday, okay? Me and my wife, um, we're just going to spend time today. 
and we woke up prepared for demons because yesterday they were trying to attack my wife and then I had to I I I slew them there okay and then as I talk through her to them now now she understands it more what I'm doing before she thought I was disrespecting her cuz I'm talking straight through her eyes to the demons that are trying to pull her this way and pull her that way she's getting stronger every day fighting them off herself they don't dare try to come to me they can't come and penetrate me but they can use other people that are still learning so i see you know i see the i see the demons attacking and and i will i will talk straight through you and i don't care if you get offended because i know that in the end it's the best thing for you but um Yeah, my son that we named Christian, Robin, Tease, saved my life. I mean, not literally, but spiritually, yeah. His voice, what I did, how I heard it, how, I, how my heart was broken. I had a broken and a contrite heart, and I came to God on my knees asking him please take over my life because I can't do it anymore I am a loser that's breaking down the wall that wall crumbled like it like it had no like it had tempered mortar in between the bricks it just crumbled and I was humbled and from that point on, I just started to go in God's direction. The very narrow path. Because it was only a path for me to go. It only had enough room for me. And I, I've i said it to him a couple times. Uh, and I just, you know, I want him to know how much I love him. And, and um, I'm sure people can relate, you know. It's your kid, it's your son, or it's your daughter. You, you see them struggling. You know what they're struggling about. You know that you know they're not going to understand it. And uh, but you try your best. So I just I remind him that he is the reason why I turn to God. I just you know I got I got to give him the credit where where it's due. It was my fault for for stealing. I did it for. I didn't even have to do it. Is what it. This is the part that, like, I did it because I grew up that way. And then, as I got, when I when I went to this school, you know, this Masonic school, Thaddeus Stevens State College of Technology, why would you go to a, a school if it's still with Masons that own it, Robin? What's wrong with you? Shut up. People are so freaking ridiculous, it's, it's sad. But, um... So after I got out of that school, I, I worked. I worked for seven fifty an hour. I did it for a year. I got a raise. I got it nine dollars an hour. After a year and a half, I always worked like somebody was watching me. I was right, man. I lived my life like people were watching me. I had no clue that they were, but I just always worked as if they did. Look, I know what my purpose here is. I do. I know one hundred percent what I'm, why I'm here, and I'm and I'm sticking with the confidence that I have. Because I am faithful in a time of trouble. And so, uh, yeah, so the guy, Barry, that seen, who was a subcontractor, he seen how I worked and he, and he hired me because I was, I, I was running circles around the people, you know, that were getting paid $18 an hour, nonstop. Um, Getting paid seven fifty to nine dollars an hour tops, running circles around people that are getting paid twice as much as me, kind of reminds me of YouTube. Uh, I'm running circles around you clowns. You can't keep up. I can I can pump out many videos and just torment the hell out of you guys, and that's how I got Lefty to finally get up and show his true colors. Okay, because it took that that 
exhaustion of out. You're pissing me off, Robin. I tried to talk to you and I failed miserably. I love how you said that because you nailed it. But the point is, when I started working with, with, with Barry, well, I mean, there was times I was making $2,000 a week. It, it, it's like, what am I... But I'm still going out there stealing because I'm popping my Xanax and I'm getting b b the balls. And I, and I think that, you know, it's like I didn't need it. I could have just bought it with my money, but I'd rather go out and steal it for the excitement of stealing something. The excitement of committing a sin. I didn't look at it that way until now, but, you know, it, that's the way it is. So, people on YouTube, they get excited when they are spewing vile language and disgust and causing division between people. I mean, they get so excited, they'll freaking love on their dogs because of it. I got a cheaper one today. I just wanted to put that out there.